Let's get straight to it. Evan Lucas joining us from IG in Melbourne. Evan, good morning to you, first off. Let's talk gold. Um, I mentioned John Noonan saying that, you know, this big move down in gold um, could be exaggerated, but maybe a taste of what's to come if tapering exceeds expectations. How do you see it? Gold is what's going on in the, in the silver market. Silver tends to be a very good lead indicator to what gold will do over the coming you know, sort of couple of days or even a couple of weeks. And, and last night, silver was hit even harder than what gold happened, and, and it was down roughly around about just over five percent. It's now down into the mid to low twenties rather than where it has been over the last couple of weeks, which is in the mid to higher twenties. And, and then again, that gets back to what we've been seeing with regards to how trading's been leading into what's going to happen in, in around about two trading days' time. So, so next Tuesday is when the Fed meeting starts, and if you have a look at that trade, the the, uh, the actual one-day move of the silver price, it wasn't actually done by the U.S. unemployment claims data. It was done over the day, and it was really, really heading south very, very quickly. And that looks like positioning. And, and I agree with what John is suggesting: is that there is going to be a lot of probably jostling. And considering that we've got a fairly low amount of data coming out until the Fed meeting, there will be a lot of people going up their own, making up their own minds, and making their own decisions. And for that reason, silver is one of those places you can see that moving. You can also see it in the gold price. Last night gold fell by around about 2.72 percent or thereabouts to uh, 13.21. Now considering at the start of this month we were as, almost as high as 1400 US an ounce that's a really really big shift and, and we are heading back into those you know 1200 uh, dollar handle sort of idea it is something that doesn't seem out of the question as we move more and more towards that and that all basically culminates into one other thing and that's the US dollar. The US dollar is in a very very tight range you've, you've got to be very very sort of uh, quick on your feet to actually move with how the dollar is trading at the moment. We've got the Syria crisis hanging over the head of it. But at the same time, if they do indeed actually taper with $10 billion as of Wednesday, which is probably when they're going to come out with it, you will see the US dollar move higher. So at the moment, there's, there's sort of a very big clash of all those major sort of players, gold, US dollar, crude as well, is all one area. And it's very, very sort of culminating to one sort of idea. The, uh, the, the major winner out of this will be volatility. There's no doubt volatility will probably get stronger over the next two or three weeks. We've also got the German elections, not this weekend, the weekend after, that may also culminate into the same idea. So there does feel like there's a pullback in today on the equity markets in the US. It does felt like it started and it will probably get stronger and stronger on Monday and also on Tuesday nights as well as we lead into that Fed meeting. Okay. Um, when we look at sort of the, the economic data that is leading up to this meeting, we did have that jobless claims reading through the overnight period. On the headline, looking pretty good, lowest claims since April 2006 for that jobless claim. But uh, when you actually nutted into the numbers, there was a little bit of, uh, of question marks hanging over it because of some of the reporting that went into it. And this, again, is, is against the backdrop of the disappointing non-farm payroll data that we saw last Friday. So we're expecting to see retail sales, business inventories, uh, and producer prices out of the United States tonight. Is there anything in those reports that might either strengthen or weaken the case for tapering come Wednesday, as you say? Probably not. Most most of the data that the uh, the Fed actually wants to see is now out, and I completely agree. There's about three states that missed out on actually reporting last night. That, that really does distort that 292,000 cl uh, unemployment claims last night. Yes, it is technically the lowest read since April 2006, but there are several pieces of data missing there. And as you said, it goes back to what we've also seen with the unemployment rate is one part, major part that the Fed's looking towards. Now we know that Bill Dudley, we know Jamie Bullard are very very clear on that, and Charles Evans has that. 200,000 unemployment claims and employment made uh, figure in his head as, as where he would see tapering. Now, we keep hearing the word uneven, and there's no doubt that this, again, is another piece of uneven data. Non-farm, the official non-farm payroll numbers, as you said, was 169,000. But if you look at that, a couple of days before, the ADP number was 176. And if you go further back to the ISM uh, PMI data that happened two days before that last week, it actually moved up from 53 to 57 on the expansion scale and that implies a $200,000 change in, in employment numbers. So it's all very uneven, it's all very blurry, it's why you can see currently the moves that we're seeing in the, in the commodity space, particularly gold as it does lose its luster as a store of value. You can see it in the US dollar as well and it does mean that there's very much a lot of different opinions coming into the market because only, just over half of Bloomberg uh, economists surveyed actually believe that taper will happen and that's not a huge amount of numbers if you think about it considering how strong the market's probably been reacting to the whole idea that it will actually start next Wednesday and, and that's why at the moment it's a very directionless market. It does feel like the, the major winner out of this, as I said before, will probably be volatility. 
Okay, so directionless market. We still do have today's session to get through. So where are we looking to for cues? I mean, obviously we'll be watching the material space, gold in particular. But as far as offshore cues, I mean, Japan, China, where to today, Evan? Yeah, look, China and, and Japan are the interesting two, and they have been an absolute bright spot this week, particularly Japan. Japan, since finding out that the Tokyo won the 2020 Olympics, has been on a tear, had a very good start to the week, and managed to hold on to most of that over the last four trading days. And again, it will probably have a bit of a pullback today, considering the global sentiment, but it's going to hold above that 1,400 po uh, 14,000 point mark. Very, very sort of magical mark for the, for the Japanese market, and that is a good lead. We've also seen, again, that even though the, the, the US dollar against the yen has been pushing lower, it has managed to hold quite well. It's just below parity. And that also is, is another reasonable lead to sort of hold on to the Japanese market. Moving to China, look, the Chinese data this week has been very, very good. Looking again, though, at what came out of Li Keqiang's uh, speech to the World Economic Forum yesterday, that was very interesting. It did suggest very closely that the Chinese, not just now, but over the next 18 months particularly, as they move into their, their new 10-year government reign, will probably start to try and reform the economy. They do want to look at moving the yuan towards a more, well, not necessarily a floating, but a less pegged sort of currency rate. They also know that they want to get involved with the interest rate. So you will see blips coming out of China, but it does look quite positive in terms of what they're trying to do. They are really trying to open their borders and they're really trying to insulate any sort of outflows like what we've seen in emerging markets in India and also we've seen in Indonesia. And all of that culminates in some fairly good news for the whole region. So that will be the bright spot. If we are going to get through what looks like a fairly tricky September, October period, we're going to have to look to Asia and particularly China and Japan as they continue to either ramp up for the Japanese or moderate their, their current economic growth to become a little bit more of a freely flowing uh, area. And and that's all good news for a commodity market like Australia. So that's what we're looking. Unfortunately, we will probably pull back today. Currently looking down around about 18 points to, to 25, 25. And that's not a bad thing. I think we do need a pullback. If we are going to ramp up to around about 5,400 by the end of the year, we need a pullback before we go further forward. And that, again, will come back from any good news coming out of China and Japan, Nadine. All right. Look forward to it. Evan, thanks so much. We'll check in with you later on. Thanks, Nadine. Have a good day. Evan Lucas from IG.